Good day, this is Health on the Hill. I'm Jackie Judd. Religion, politics, and health care, it's a potent combination, as the political fight between the White House and Capitol Hill shows, a fight triggered by the administration's decision to require most religious-affiliated institutions, such as Catholic hospitals, to include free contraceptive care as part of their health insurance coverage beginning in 2013. A clear sign of the growing anger over the issue was Speaker John Bain unexpected appearance today on the House floor. In imposing this requirement, the federal government has drifted dangerously beyond its constitutional boundaries, encroaching on religious freedom in a manner that affects millions of Americans and harms some of our nation's most vital institutions. Kaiser Health News correspondent Mary Agnes Carey is following this and joins us now. Welcome, Mary Agnes. Thank you. Walk us back a couple of steps. This is part of the ACA the health reform law, and what does it require, and what has the administration done about it in the past couple of weeks? What the health law requires is that preventive services to be offered free, no co-pays, no deductibles. The Institute of Medicine advised the Department of Health and Human Services to include contraception as part of these required services, and so when that annou announcement was made on January 20th, churches themselves, religious, uh, church synagogues and so on were exempted, but as you noted, not the religious affiliated institutions, not the hospitals, not the universities. They've said those institutions will have a year to comply with the requirement that goes into effect for everyone else in August. And David Axelrod, one of the president's top advisors in his presidential campaign, suggested last night there might be a compromise in the works. What did the White House say about that today? The White House has reiterated repeatedly that they're open to talking to all parties. As Speaker Boehner mentioned, there are religious institutions, Catholic institutions, some evangelical institutions that find this requirement offensive to them, and they feel that it is an intrusion into their religious freedom. And so what the White House has said is we want to talk to people that have concerns. We've given them a year additional time to implement this requirement, and we hope to find a compromise. But they've made it clear that they are not backing down from this guarantee of contraceptive coverage for all women, no matter where they work. Political tightrope for the White House. I think it is a political tightrope, but it kind of cuts both ways. This was very critical for the Democratic base, very important for women's rights groups, women's health groups. They feel very strongly about this. The administration feels strongly about it. They're hoping that signaling uh, that they want to be flexible and giving an additional year to comply will possibly buy them, some, buy them some time, they might find some compromise, but opponents of this say it doesn't matter that they have an extra year. They have another year to violate their conscience, which just doesn't appeal to them. And in the House floor speech today that John Boehner delivered, he suggested that there may be some kind of legislative action he that did. he will try to move through the House? The Energy and Commerce Committee has already had a hearing on this previously. I'm sure they'll have more hearings there. You can see legislation coming out of that committee, going to the House floor. In the Senate, Mitch McConnell, who's the Republican leader, has suggested they'll also have a legislative response. But in the Senate, Democrats control the floor. So you might not see something like that get to the floor for action. But on Capitol Hill, this fight is not breaking cleanly between Democrats and Republicans. For some Democrats, for example, who are Catholic, they're not very happy. John Larson, who's the fourth ranking Democrat in the House, has suggested the administration work with opponents, including Catholic churches, to find a compromise on this. Dan Lipinski, who's another a Democrat in the House, is concerned about it in the Senate. Bob Casey, who's a senator from Pennsylvania, is very concerned. Joe Manchin of West Virginia is concerned. So while the majority of Democrats do support the president, there are absolutely those who do not. And in 2012, we cannot have a conversation like this without making the obvious point that there is a presidential campaign going on. And so how much of this dispute is one is a proxy, if you will, for the larger disagreements that many Republicans have with the reform law at large? I think that it's simply another opportunity for Republicans to talk about what they hate about the law. They've made the argument for a long time. It's an overreach of the federal government. Here's another example. And if, by the way, we run the place, we'll get rid of it. So they're definitely using this. But Democrats as well are using this to build support for the health law, to say that this guarantee for women is a critical pillar of the health law and that they plan to maintain it. Okay, more later, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mary Agnes Carey of Kaiser Health News, thank you. Thank you.